Okay, hey, so a uh, little chat on setting up a CR Speed holster. Um, I know you've got a, a SIG holster. It's a little bit different than this one just because the trigger block area is slightly different to accommodate, uh, you know, the differences in the SIG between SIG and a 1911. So I don't know exactly how to set that holster up perfectly in terms of um, locking block and stuff, but it should be pretty close. Um, a buddy of mine has one of the SIG holsters, and I don't know, uh, it, it doesn't fit quite the same, but it's pretty close. So uh, if you have questions, let me know, we'll go over them. So a couple of things to look at first off about modifications uh, and things you might need to get the things set up uh, perfectly. So it comes, I don't know about the SIG one, but mine came with these little shim dealies here. So. There's like a front to back wedge and a real thick block and one that goes this way. You know, it's thicker on one side than the other and a couple of flat shims. These are going to be important for getting the gun, um, you know, canted away from the body and pushed out from the body some so that you don't run into your body when you go to grip the gun. Um, you can see I've got on mine, let's see here, get this lined up. I've got one little wedge that kind of provides some cant uh, from the top of the gun out. I'll show you that when we get into looking at the holster on. And then, uh, where is it here, there. And then just a little thin one to give a little more room um, to the holster. I've made uh, one slight modification to mine. You can see here next to the, the locking block, uh, there's usually a little dingus right here that, that stops the locking arm from moving backwards. I've just dremeled mine off. That lets me unlock the holster by just moving the handle down here and it's totally out of the way. You don't have to worry about, uh, you know, bumping it or having the holster partially locked or something like that. Um, so that's something you might look at. But some folks' guns, too, they'll have something that sticks out to the side this way and it prevents that handle from fully moving forward. That just keeps it out of the way of my hand and stuff, too. So. Um, couple of adjustments that are interesting. There should be a, a little screw right here on the front of this. I see it on mine. It's hard to get it into the light just right, but uh, it's sort of a, um, I don't know, we'd call it a drag tension thing in photographic terms, but it, it lets you loosen up these two big screws in here, and this will still stay pretty much in place, so you can, you can take the holster off to put hard torque on these big screws. Um, so usually what you want to do I've got a two-piece belt. It makes some things a lot easier. I like to run a mag pouch right up front in the center. So um, this way I can put it in the center and keep all my gear where it needs to go. And I don't have to, you know, take stuff off to put the belt on and then, you know, rearrange it each time. So it's just Velcro. Uh, it's loop Velcro on this belt. The inner belt that I've got on is hook, or I'm sorry, the other way around. This is hook Velcro, this is loop Velcro. So when you line the gun up, what you'd kind of like, I may have to change the camera angle here. Uh, what we'd like to see is uh, we'd like to see the gun set. Yeah, we'll change camera angle. Uh, the, the, the grip of the gun is right below where your hand just kind of naturally hangs. Now my, my arm kind of sits on the outside of the magazine well there, you know, so it's not a perfect straight hang, but but this is pretty much, when I'm standing straight up and down, that's about where my hand hangs. When I move my arm up, I want the my hand to just come to the grip naturally and not have to travel backwards or forwards along my body to get to it. That prevents, uh, you know, the shoulders from moving around. We'll look at that here. Okay, so if you see how it, it, my hand just comes straight up to the gun, right? If I have the gun too far back, I'm going to simulate this, but watch what happens to this shoulder. If I go backwards, see it lift, and it has to, to be able to get move the whole carriage backwards to get to the gun. Similarly, if it's too far forward, I have to go into kind of a weird chicken wingy kind of thing over here. So if the gun's where it needs to be, the shoulders don't have to move at all for me to get on the gun, okay? The race holster has a little bit of uh, luxury this way. On a, on a regular sort of belt holster, especially one that we're trying to like carry concealed or behind the hip or something, you don't have a choice, right? You gotta kind of move 
and, and accept a little bit of movement in the shoulder. But if I move my shoulder, it tends to move the head too. So um, your eyes are trying to get you, you know, get the gun in between you and the target um, aimed, you know, quickly. And if you're moving your eyes around, that effectively to your brain makes every target a moving target, which means they take longer to acquire and it's longer to draw the gun. So since we're racing, this is all about like doing stuff fast, right? So this is not where you maybe would want to carry a gun normally because it can be a, a little bit in the way. You see mine is, is even with the middle of my pocket on these jeans. And uh, right at the point of my hip bone is, is right here. It's kind of, it's, it's almost behind where the cocking handle is on the gun, but somewhere about right here. So it's, it's further forward, you know, than you see a lot. But this keeps us efficient with shoulder movement and, uh, you know, keeps me from doing all kinds of extra motion just to get to the gun. That's going to be the first step, okay? So you adjust that um, simply by moving the holster back and forth on the belt. Um, incidentally, there's two little screws up at the top. And then the same screw that controls the, the rake angle of the holster this way uh, also tightens up the hanger on the belt. So what you kind of want to do is, is work those around some, but try to put tension on these top screws first and provide final tension with the bottom because these top ones are kind of weak and they strip easy. So uh, I don't know if there's extras of those in my... I don't see any extras in the spares kit over there. So. You know, if you strip those, you got to order them or something, and it's crazy. So, you know, don't try to put a lot of force on the top ones. Tighten those down and then put the force on with this big screw at the bottom. So, all right, so once you get the holster positioned front to back, uh, the next step is going to be to set the rake angle, okay? And by rake, it's it's this cant here, this, this movement here on the gun. Um, we can set height, too, just to kind of get sort of a feel. Um, you know, height, just set it temporarily and use that drag screw that I talked about before to kind of keep it where it needs to be. Essentially what we want with those two, two adjustments is for the gun to sit with the grip angle here, okay, either level, parallel with the ground or slightly canted so that the back part of the grip is up. That's kind of where I prefer mine. Um, I'll give you a side shot of that in just a second. And then height-wise, I like to have it so that that the front strap of the grip is just a little bit below the bottom or a little bit above the bottom of my belt. That gives me a, a short travel this way and it's a comfortable spot to get to from here. If it's too high, you jack it up into your armpit and you have to lift your shoulder. If it's too low, you can't really move your hand to get to the gun. Uh, and It creates kind of an awkward position if your hands aren't starting relaxed at sides. And if you're coming from up here, you got to come way down and it's a big whole arm movement instead of just an elbow movement from here. So, all right, let me give you this other angle.